Hey kids, Miss Kulkarni here. In this video, let's find out how to identify a type of chemical bond using some simple tricks. But before we talk about those tricks, let's review those important chemical bonds. One of the important bond is covalent. And covalent bonding is all about share and care. So electrons are shared when we get covalent bonds. Now electron pair which is shared may not be shared equally. It depends upon both the atoms. If both the atoms decide to share it equally, the bond becomes non-polar covalent bond. But if one of the atom turns out to be more greedy than other one, then electron gets pulled towards one atom and the bond will be polar covalent. Now one of the easy way to predict that the bond could be covalent is look at those elements. And if those elements are all non-metals, most probably it is going to be a covalent bond. And then there is another trick by which we find out electronegativity. For a bond, there will be two different atoms and two different electronegativity values. So we can find out those values from the reference table and we take the difference between those which we call as delta En which is difference in electronegativity. If the difference is less than 0.3, the bond can be predicted to be a non-polar covalent bond. If the difference is between 0.3 and 1.7, that will be classified as a polar covalent bond. Now we also learned something about ionic bonding. Ionic bond is formed between a metal and a non-metal or simple way will be cation and anion. In that we learn that metals will be always the one they will be losing electrons so we call them losers and always we get the anions which are formed with the non-metals they will be winning the contest so they will be winners. So there will be a cation and there will be an anion in ionic compound. That is one trick to find out if the compound is ionic or not. The second trick is we go back to the electronegativity values and we take the difference between the values for two elements. And if the difference is 1.7 or greater, then the bond is considered more probably as an ionic bond. So what exactly is electronegativity? It is the pull an atom can exert to gain an electron. And with that, we can predict the type of bond if it's ionic or if it is polar covalent or if it is non-polar covalent and the values for electronegativity are given in this chart. Let's go back and summarize what we just discussed so we can easily predict the type of bond. Ionic bond delta En should be 1.7 or greater. For non-polar covalent it should be less than 0.3 and for polar covalent, it should be between 0.3 and 1.7. I like to remember this using a number line. And I'm going to put those values 0.3 and 1.7 on the number line. Now, if the delta En, the difference in electronegativity values, is more than 1.7, that bond will be classified as ionic bond. If the value is less than 0.3, we classify that as non-polar covalent bond. And if it is between 0.3 and 1.7, then that is classified as polar covalent bond. So it's that simple. We just look at the values for electronegativity and find out where it lies. Here are the steps to find out the polarity of a bond and how to indicate in compounds. The number one step is you need to label each element and also write down the electronegativity values. Then the next step is 
you put the arrow above the bond and the arrow should be pointing towards more electronegative element. We also put delta negative and delta positive sign. The one which is more electronegative, we put there delta negative. And the one which is more positive, we put that as delta positive. Delta indicates extremely small quantity of the charge. And that will show exactly how the electrons are distributed across that bond. Let's take the example of bond between hydrogen and oxygen. The values for electronegativity for hydrogen is 2.1 and for oxygen it is 3.5. So delta En for this particular bond will be a difference between these two values. And we always take higher value minus the smaller value. So we end up getting that difference as 1.4. So, delta En is 1.4 and where does it lie? That is between 0.3 and 1.7 which corresponds to polar covalent compound. So, if this is a polar covalent compound, we should be having an arrow which goes towards the more electronegative element which is going from hydrogen to oxygen. And if you want to show the charges, this is going to be delta positive and this will be delta negative. Let's move on to the next question. We have to show the electron pull for the bonds between these two compounds. For fluorine, we have a bond between two fluorine atoms. And although the values for electronegativity for fluorine are going to be same, let's write down those. Those are 4.0 and 4.0. And then the difference delta En obviously is going to be 0 for that because it's 4.0 minus 4.0. That means the bond is not a polar bond. This will be an example of non-polar covalent bond. How about HCl? For hydrogen and chlorine, let's get the values again. We have value 2.1 for hydrogen and 3.0 for chlorine. So, difference will be 3.0 minus 2.1 which is 0.9. Again, where does 0.9 come? If you go back to the earlier slide, that comes between 0.3 and 1.7. That means we have a polar covalent compound. And we know if it's a polar bond, we must have an arrow that represents from lower to higher electronegativity. So, arrow goes from hydrogen to chlorine and if you want to put delta this will be slightly positive and this will be slightly negative element which has the higher electronegativity will be always negative now here's the compound c2cl6 and we have to find out how many non-polar bonds are there and how many polar bonds are there let's find out the values for carbon and chlorine for carbon the value is 2.5 and for chlorine the value is 3.0. So we have one bond between carbon and carbon and for that delta En value will be 2.5 minus 2.5 which will be obviously equal to 0. If 0 is the value that must be a non-polar covalent bond. If you look carefully we have six bonds between carbon and chlorine and what is the value for delta En? That will be 3.0 minus 2.5 which will be 0 0.5. 0 0.5 is between 0.3 and 1.7. So all these bonds must be polar covalent bonds. So guess what? You learned some easy trick methods to predict the type of bond. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. I'll see you again in next video. Until then, bye-bye.